couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to the most important lesson I've ever made and probably will ever make. This lesson has to do with practicing. Everything to do with practicing. Practicing music, practicing your instrument, exercises, muscle memory, methodology, everything. But in order to actually talk about practicing, we have to talk about the misconceptions first because the misconceptions about practicing are what lead to uh, all of the frustration and all of the uh, will and the wish to quit playing uh, your instrument altogether and quitting music, which unfortunately happens uh, a lot more often than people think because um, those misconceptions about practicing and about goal reaching in music uh, are terribly, terribly uh, stiff and uh, wrong. Most of them are actually wrong. And those lead to insecurities and the insecurities lead to quitting. So I wanna prevent people from quitting playing the instrument because you can always get better at what you do and you can always learn something new and quitting won't help with that. So in order to eradicate quitting, I want to tell you why those misconceptions exist. The misconceptions exist because of the classical method. The classical method, even though there's nothing inherently wrong about the classical method, um, is mostly aimed at producing players, technical players. Even though they have a lot of emotion in their playing and a lot of expression, there's not a lot of creativity there. And the classical method used to have creativity back in the classical era. They knew how to improvise, they knew how to compose, they knew how to manipulate music. But today, if you ask a classical player to improvise something, they can't. And that surprises most people. Classical players can't improvise. They can't even improvise a simple chord progression unless it's written. Because... Um, you know how you have a language that you understand but you can't speak it? That's because it's two different parts of the brain. And those are the same parts of the brain that can listen to music and play music. And if you only play from the page, then you're not actually making the music. You're just making motions on your instrument. Perfect as those may be, you're not creating anything and creation is speaking the language. So that's why classical players can't improvise and unfortunately aren't very creative. Now, um, unfortunately, that also seeped into the jazz method of today. I think it was Kenny Barron who said that jazz today comes from the head and not from the heart. And he's completely right because the jazz method has become the classical method. Even improvisation lessons are based on specific exercises, specific improvisational methods, and specific ways to run over the scales, combine them, and harmonize them. And that's not really improvisation. So um, that's why most of jazz today, unfortunately, is full of superb players, but they're very, very boring. So um, that's basically what's wrong about the classical way of um, practicing and that leads to a lot of frustration because that makes a lot of uh, young players um, and that includes adults I mean young players you know beginner players and intermediate players to think that they're not playing correctly because they're not playing perfectly and that's not the reason you've started learning music you you don't um, I mean you should aspire to perfection but you shouldn't aspire to technical perfection. You should aspire to creative perfection. You want to be creative with your instrument. You want to be able to play a lot of genres, a lot of expressional um, uh, licks, a lot of riffs, a lot of different uh, forms of music. You want to create music of your own. Even if you don't want to compose songs and pieces, you still want to be able to take the songs that you know and play them a bit differently. And that's something that most classical players and classically trained players, even, you know, rock guitar players, they just can't do. Most rock guitar players, you give them, I don't know, a Latin rhythm and they can't do it. And they can shred and they can run over scales. They can do amazing pyrotechnical things and yet they can't change the rhythm that they're used to. Um, and that leads to a lot of frustration. People think that if they don't 
practice something to perfection, they can't move on to the next thing. And that's wrong. And now we're going to talk a little bit about muscle memory. The right way to practice, okay? And uh, I've talked to a lot of teachers, and I've talked to a lot, I've, I've taught hundreds of students over the years, and I've seen it work. The muscles don't learn the way the brain does, okay? It's not a linear progress. Sometimes you may struggle with the instrument for months at a time or with a simple composition for months and then one day you'll wake up and you'll be able to play it perfectly. And the reason is that the muscles take time to get used to uh, new information. And that's why the best practicing method is to practice a few things at a time uh, as different as possible from one another. Uh, different in rhythm, different in approach, different in technique. You know, learn a solo, learn a, a strumming song, learn a fingerstyle composition, maybe even a classical composition, all at a time, simultaneously. Practice one thing for 10 minutes, then move to the other thing, practice it for 10 minutes, move on to the third thing, play that for 10 minutes, and then take a break. That's the most important thing. That's the secret to effective practicing. Take a break. Go play your computer, go work, go drink, eat something, just rest, just sit with your dogs or something. Take a break. That helps the muscles and the brain assimilate the knowledge. And then you'll go back to the guitar after 30 minutes and you'll play a lot better than you would uh, if you'd have continued practicing and getting frustrated over the, over the parts that frustrate you. Because uh, if you keep practicing the same thing and uh, a part uh, of, of the composition frustrates you and you can't get over it and you can't get over that hurdle, it just serves to frustrate you even more and it fixes the mistake and it fixes the frustration. So you come back to that composition already angry. Okay, you come to the guitar and you know you're gonna fail. And that's completely wrong because A, you don't have a point of reference. You have no idea how other players uh, are doing with that same composition. You have no idea uh, where you are on the scale of success. You may be very, very, very close to nailing it, but you have no idea because you keep saying, ah, oh, I suck, just because you can't succeed uh, uh, pulling off a, a complicated lick or a chord change. It's just a chord change. Don't get stressed over it. If you really can't, make it. If you really can't nail it down, let it go. Learn something different, something completely different. Learn something else, a different song, a different composition. Then after a week, two weeks, a month, a year, go back to that composition that gave you trouble and you'll see that you're playing it without any trouble. Okay. Uh, the idea here is that it's all relative. There's no real scale of difficulty. And that's because we're all different people. Now, of course, a Rachmaninoff piece is a lot more difficult than Chopsticks. That's a given. And an Elton John song is a lot easier than, let's say, playing a jazz song with all those inversions and the jazz method of playing chords. Of course. Uh, but what I mean is that for one player, one song may be extremely difficult to learn, while another player who, you know, who is almost at the same level will find it very, very easy to learn. And that student may have difficulty with a classical composition or a solo that the first player would have um, just would have a blast playing it and would learn it in 10 minutes or 15 minutes or an hour while the other uh, student example would take weeks to nail it because um, he may have trouble with scales while the other player is good with scales but not with chords. So you, you, tr you get what I'm trying to say here? Everyone is different. One person's struggle is another person's um, breeze. Um, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but never mind. Um, so don't compare yourself to others. You have no idea what they're going through. You have no idea how much they work to get uh, to where they are. And uh, basically, don't put pressure on yourself. Sometimes practicing effectively for half an hour is a lot better than practicing ineffectively for three hours. Um, and again, 
diversify. Try to play as many different things as you can. Even if you don't nail them, it'll become easier with time. And the better you get, the easier the previous stuff will get for you. And even if you had trouble playing it a year ago, right now it would seem the easiest thing of all to just pick up your guitar and play it from memory even if you haven't played it for two years just because you had trouble with it. Okay, so don't be afraid of tackling things that you think are way above your level because those are the exact exercises that will get you where you want to be and get you to be a better guitar player and overall musician. And that also applies for ear development. Now, uh, if you only read from a page, you'll never develop your ear. You have to listen to what you're playing. And if you're just playing technically and going through the motions, you're focusing on reading and you're focusing on playing. You're not focusing on listening. And listening is the most important thing about music, okay? You have a lot of uh, extremely gifted musicians who are boring. And they're boring because they never listened to what they're playing. They're just technical players. Oh, by the way, I just want to make it absolutely clear that I'm all for practicing scales, practicing chords, practicing things to perfection, and practicing uh, songs until you nail them. That's not what I'm trying to say here. Of course you have to practice technique. That's a given. I'm just talking about the creative aspect of practicing which most classical methods and teachers neglect to mention and teach their students. That's all. Now let's continue the discussion. So um, always listen to what you play. Always try to listen to the subtle changes between the chords, the subtle changes between um, the scales, the subtle changes between, uh, even between one string and another. There's a subtle change if you play it like this. And this. And even this. Okay? It's a different expression. It's a different sound. And on a classical guitar, it's a radically different sound. So learn to listen to the differences, learn to listen to the subtleties, and in no time you will be a better player and a better musician than 90% of people learning music because most people forget to listen. And on that note, I'll finish this uh, lesson and I hope this helped you and will help you uh, understand the sources of your frustration. Don't forget, practice a little bit at a time, practice different things at a time, and take breaks. Okay, that's the most important thing. If you're struggling with a piece, let it go, stop playing, go to sleep, wake up tomorrow, pick up your guitar, and you'll play it better. I guarantee it. I'll see you in the next lesson. If you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Click subscribe and join the Lick and Ref community, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.